This is the history of the Ladybug. My name is John Pavon. Uh, we got the same crew as we did last year. Had a little technical problem with the, didn't have the right laptop or something. This projector was different. Sorry for the inconvenience, the wait. Um, what we have here is a slideshow presentation. I'm gonna take you through the history of the Ladybug starting from the very first uh, uh, Ladybug going all the way up to the most recent Ladybug that's out here. Green is a, uh, this is my t-shirts and hat that we're gonna be uh, giving if you wanna fill out a one-page seminar uh, sheet. And uh, Joe over here, she's behind you. She's sitting at the table over there. She's got the one-page survey. You fill it out. You don't have to put your name or anything. Just I just wanna get feedback on the presentation so next year I can make it better. And I do, I do every year I update it and try to, try to improve it every year. So what we have here is a, uh, a table of contents. We'll take you through um, one to 13. I'm gonna do it real quickly because we're, we're, we're falling behind. The first ladybug is called the Ark Ladybug. And the last, last ladybug find and a new man-made uh, genetically modified from Japan ladybug. And then the Asian lady beetles of the 60s and are you a lucky, uh, are ladybugs lucky? Next slide. Go ahead. Should go next one. Should be, there it is. Corey's story, lack of research. Bella dies from cancer. Bella's my sister. She's the reason why I got started in this to begin with. Uh, ladybugs versus pesticides and end of survey time. And that's where you get the, uh, the survey and you fill it out. So uh, ladybugs, ladybugs, they don't know the very first ladybug, uh, what it looked like. So this is my artist's rendition here of what the first ladybug looks like. Um, it's called an Arca ladybug. And, um, and so they, they do know that it was 400 million years old. In Germany, they have a fossil with the impression shell of a ladybug, which... Uh, um, it has, it looks like it has, um, it's for, for a ladybug with, a lot, with more legs than what we have here. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, how many ladybug species are there in the world? Anybody want to take a guess? How many ladybug species there is in the world? 500. 7,000. How much? 7,000. 7,000? No. No, it's 5,001 species worldwide of ladybugs. Okay, uh, 80 million years ago, um, they, they, uh, they diversed and began to take flight. Uh, it was long before the birds or the bats or the predators. They had a flat board like appendages and hinges and muscular driven and an outer shell. What's that? Yeah, let's go next to uh, next one. Okay, the um, 5001 species is, uh, was recently um, seen by Win Winton. He's the, uh, he was an English college student, and um, he named it Winston Ladybug's Beetle. And so if you find a species, a new species, if you discover one, you get to name it. So he named it that, is what he named it. Uh, in, in California, there's um, 150 different species. In the United States, there's 450 species. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is the 5,002 species. It's a genetically modified uh, ladybug from Japan. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys know me, but I am considered the ladybug expert online. And whenever anything happens new, they send me an email, ask me my opinion. Uh, these students from this uh, college in, in Japan, they contacted me and wanted to know my opinion uh, on their genetically modification. And uh, I, I wasn't too happy with it because I thought that uh, the ladybugs, um, you know, they're, they have a shell for a reason. They have those red dots and they look attractive and people like them. But I'm not sure people would like that without the shell. But uh, they're not listening to me. 
and they're they're making them and infor, uh, selling them to the farmers in the farm belt, okay, to eat the insects. Uh, the problem is with ladybugs is that they fly away, uh, and people, um, the farmers, think that they could eat more aphids if they stuck around. So, um, yeah, it, the problem is is that they just didn't do enough research on ladybugs like I have. If they did enough research, they would understand they don't need to do that. Okay, so next, next one. These are just some ladybugs you can see. This is called a seven dot ladybug. It's, uh, this particular one is from New York. He's eating some aphids there. Go ahead, next one. There's another one there. Okay, next one. There's, now this is a, uh, a strange one. This is what I call a hybrid. A hybrid is a uh, ladybug that mixed species. So uh, like, um, this is a cross between a, um, a California ladybug and an Asian ladybug. So they actually need to give it a name, but they haven't named it yet. So uh, I just call it a hybrid. But um, it's, it's actually an Asian lady beetle that's, uh, and its behavior is all Asian. So it, it acts like an Asian lady beetle. Okay, go ahead, next one. This one's a California ladybug. Go ahead, next one. Can you guess which country this one's from? Take a wild guess. Where? One more time. Italy? No, it's actually from Singapore. Of course. Singapore. Okay, go ahead, next one. They're, they're, they're eating an aphid there. See that? Okay, next one. This one's, uh, guess what, where, where this one's from? California. Okay, go ahead. There's another one. Now, these, this is all the, uh, the, the life of the ladybug. That's an adult to the far left and to, to the right. That's the next stage after they hatch. They turn into that. And the, the top two pictures there, they eat aphids and insects. So what do, what do ladybugs eat? They eat all the pests and the insects that eat your plants and gardens, okay? Um, if you offered a ladybug, let's say a white fly, a silver fly, or a scale insect, or a spider mite, or an aphid, nine times out of 10, they'll take a aphid over any of those. So aphids to the ladybug is like steak to man. So if you were a meat eater, and I offered you a steak or a hamburger, nine times out of 10, you would take a steak over a hamburger. Okay, next, next slide. Okay, there's another species. Go ahead, next one. There's another one. Okay, so let's stop for one second. If you look at that ladybug, it looks a little bit different than the other ladybugs, doesn't it? Can you tell what, what's a little bit different? It, it's, yeah, fewer dots, but it's also more elongated, huh? It's more elongated. So any point, whether, whether you're talking about the dots or you're talking about the elongation of them, it's, it's called a genova. And a genova is a feature of their characteristics and it gives, them, gives each species their reason to call them a different species. Do you see that? Okay, let's go ahead, next one. There's, there's a unique one, I like this one. This is, this is a popular one. Go ahead, next one. There's one that's eating a, 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 a scale. It's eating a scale. Now scale, that scale is 10 times the size, but yet it's eating it. You see that? Okay, let's go to the next one. Now, ladybugs are, are considered big money now. Um, in the Midwest, I was talking about Midwest, the farmers in Iowa, if they don't have enough uh, ladybugs, they can lose $28 million on their crops because of uh, not having enough ladybugs. Minnesota, it's 20. Michigan, it's six. And then Wisconsin, it's four. Okay, next one. Now, this is what the aphids do. Aphids, uh, like I said, to the ladybug is like steak to man. 
there's as many different aphids as there is ladybugs. Okay, so there's 5,002 species. There's probably just the same, if not more, different species of aphids. This is, was a plant that had flowers and was very, very uh, it had a lot of foliage. And for some reason, uh, those aphids attacked it. And you see what they do to a plant? They stripped all the leaves off of it, and those, those ladybugs are eating those aphids now. So at the top in the center, that's a typical aphid right there. It's a rose aphid. But there's many different species of aphids. And they vary in color and size and shape, just like the ladybugs. Okay, next one. Now this is a ladybug. Guess where this one is from? Take a wild guess. Where? Singapore? No, it's not Singapore. Anybody else want to guess? Where? Okay, it's from Hawaii. This, this ladybug is considered the most vicious ladybug on earth. Do you know why? Out of all, all the 5,002 species, sorry for the noise there, it, the reason why is because it eats not only the in insects that in order to be qualified as a ladybug, they have to eat the pests that eat your garden, right? Well, these ones eat all, uh, most ladybugs will eat all the pests on top of the earth. These ladybugs will eat the pests under the earth. Okay, so over in Hawaii, they have a, um, the, a DJ called me up one day and he said, man, it's quite a deal over there. They can see the uh, uh, visitors come to see it when they plow up the fills over there, the sugar canes, these swarm in and uh, eat all the root mites that come to the surface. So it's a big tourist thing over there now. Okay, let's go to the next one. This, guess which one this is uh, from? What, where is it from? What country? Where? Where? Japan, no, it's from uh, England, London, England. Yeah, it looks like an English pith helmet, doesn't it? Okay, let's go next one. There's another one. Okay, let's go next one. That's, that, that's a seven dot. You see that? You can count the dots on it. That's why I know it's a seven dot. Okay, let's go next one. That's another seven dot. Now, don't you like the face on them? It looks like a little face and a smile and everything. Okay, next one. There's another one. These are from New York area. Uh, I've seen one or two here in California. Not too many. Okay, let's go to the next one. There's a, there's a California ladybug. Okay, go ahead. Now this one is uh, really important. Take note of this one. This one is so unusual um, that... Uh, you remember the, the big recession we had back in 2007 and 8? Well, nobody, everybody was losing money. They were losing their job. They lost their 401ks. They were surviving. It was a hard deal. Uh, the freeways were drying up. Nobody had any money. And Cornell University got $2 million from the government to study this ladybug. It's called the lost ladybug. It, the Cornell University in, in, uh, in, over in New York wants your help to try to find this, in, this ladybug. So if you see it, you're supposed to take a picture and then send it to them. You can go on a computer and type in lost ladybug and uh, send them their picture. Make sure you tell them where you, where you found it. Okay, next one. There's another ladybug. You see, now you notice this one, if you look a little closer, it looks a little different. It's got a white uh, mark that goes all the way around its head, right? It's a little bit more elongated. This is considered the uh, cow of the ladybugs, okay? Uh, a cow is a very friendly creature for man. You know, they, they eat grass, they, um, they, they're, they're, we eat them, we eat the cows, we, we know more about the cows than anything else. And this is like the cow for the ladybug. It's called the convenient lady beetle. And it's, it, it's the one I, originally that I designed these houses for. Uh, that I make. But now I found out every species that they'll work for except for the Asian lady beetle. They won't work. Okay, next one. There's another lady beetle. 
Okay, go ahead. There's a close-up. Okay, let's go next one. There's one eating an aphid. You, you notice this aphid looks totally different than the other one, huh? Than the other aphids. You see that? Okay, next one. Now these are all the ladybugs from different countries. I'm not, I, I, I got many, many more pictures, but in order to, I can't possibly show you all of them all at one time. So I'm just giving you a set of some uh, ladybugs that are interesting to look at. Now, ladybugs besides being bright and colorful, um, sometimes they're black. Now, why would they, some ladybugs be black and some white? and some yellow and some orange. Can you guess what the color has to do with it? Actually, the, the, the color of the ladybug will identify where they're from. Okay? So the optimum temperature for the ladybug is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. The closest you can keep it to 55 degrees, it's the best for their nesting habits and their, uh, and their, and their, their, uh, their living habits. So, that color, the, the black color, for example, what does black do unlike any other color? It attracts heat, right? So you know that those black ones come from a, a mo much colder territory than, than the, the red ones or the yellow ones. So if you have the yellow ones, that's a little bit lighter than the red ones, huh? So those are from a warmer climate. You see? See how that is? Now, why do the, some of them have dots and some of them don't have dots? Can you guess? It's, it's all hereditary. It's what they, they, that species started out with. And it's the way that they bred within themselves. They kept their species going by breeding with similar ladybugs that look just like what they do. So that's how they kept these species going for all these years. You know that ladybugs are 400 million years old now. Okay, every continent, every landmass has ladybugs. Okay, let's go next one. It's a good friend of mine. He's a uh, photographer. He takes a lot of these pictures I have. Uh, he sent me this. Okay, these are California ladybugs. Go ahead, next one. There's a different ladybug. Okay, that's a Cavesian lady beetle. Next one. Now these aren't ladybugs, but these are cute pictures. I thought I'd bring them in here to show you. I couldn't pass. Co Halloween costumes. Okay, next one. That's me. That's the way I was when I was a kid. Uh, I was always looking at ladybugs and I was crazy about them. And I still am. I've never stopped. Okay, let's go to the next one. These are the Asian lady beetles. Now the Asian lady beetles uh, are not native to uh, North America, to the United States or Canada. They're from Asia. So how did they get over here from Asia? Well, uh, you could thank your government for that. Back in 1960, uh, the lima bean farmers you saw from the Midwest, they um, complained, they cried woof actually to the government. And woof meant that the plants were being eaten by the, by the aphids. You saw what the aphids did to the plants over there, right? Well, they were doing that to their lima beans. So they cried wolf to the government. The government didn't know what to do in 1960, okay? So they, the government went to the uh, chemical companies, the big chem, and said, well, do you have anything to take care of these aphids? And the uh, chem company said, no, we don't, but we could experiment. And the government said, no, we're not gonna do that. So what they did was they called an ag expert over, right? And they, they, this ag expert looked at the lima beans and he said, Oh, you've got uh, Asian aphids on your lima beans. So you need Asian lady beetles to eat the Asian aphids. Okay, made sense, right? Well, it turns out nobody double checked him. Nobody even uh, asked another person to check to be sure that that was an Asian aphid, right? Turns out it was a California aphid. He misidentified it. And any of our local species would have taken care of that problem, okay? But now, for two decades, they imported thousands and thousands of these Asian lady beetles over here. And, it, and what they did was, they didn't know that they, they, over in Asia, what they like to migrate to is caves. 
Well, we don't have caves over here, not too many. So what, they, what the Asian lady beetles saw was their houses as caves. So they've invaded people's houses and you go on YouTube and see thousands and thousands of these Asian lady beetles going in people's houses. So this has been going on for two decades now, right? So now there's a whole industry created by people trying to get rid of these Asian aphids, uh, lady, lady beetles. So they've done a pretty good job. They've made these new seals on the windows, on the doors to keep these things out. So now they don't have to worry too much about them going in the house. But these Asian lady beetles will not go away. They need a, they need a cave. So guess where they went? Take a wild guess. Where did they go? Anybody want to guess? Cars. Where, cars? Very good guess, but that's not it. Next, next one. Next slide. This is a, a bunch of the Asian lady beetles. These Asian lady beetles went to Canada, and they're very upset with the United States because they imported all these Asian a, uh, ladybugs, and they, uh, they ruined their day over in Canada. So what they do is they, uh, they get in your coffee, they get in your hair. Uh, it's, it's a mess. Okay, next one. The Asian lady beetles, see how different they look? But they're still Asian. Go ahead, next one. There's some more. You notice some don't have dots? Some have dots? Okay, next one. So where they went is your dog's mouth. They went into your dog's mouth. I'll open up the uh, next, next one. See, they went into the roof of the dog's mouth because they're looking for that cave. So something else I didn't tell you about the Asian lady beetle is, is they bite. So they're biting that dog, okay? So they, you have to go to the vet and have them literally pulled off the roof of the mouth of the dog. And you could thank the government for all this. So it'll cost anywhere from 300 to four or 500 dollars to have the vet pull those out off the dog's mouth. And you could thank the government for that. Our government did that. Okay, next one. There they are, see? Okay, next one. Next one. Okay, now, this is a, um, a problem. This is over in Canada. Uh, are anybody familiar with the National Geographic magazine? Very good. Okay, they're very, very famous. They sold, uh, this is some years ago, they sold thousands and thousands of the uh, front page with this, this uh, zombie ladybug, they call it. Okay, the zombie ladybug was a regular ladybug that got infested by parasitic wasp, okay? And this happened, it was a real small little village in Canada, and it's so small that it's very minute. But they, they, this cameraman that worked for them took a good picture, and he sold many, many uh, of the magazines because of that picture, okay? But uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because the same parasitic, uh, same family as this parasitic wasp, our government is planning on bringing over to the United States. Okay? They are planning to bring thousands and thousands over here. Guess why? Take a wild guess. No. They're, they're, the reason why they're doing it is because of an insect called the stink bug. Okay, and it eats the stink bug, but it also eats our ladybugs. It may wipe out the rest of our native species. Okay, and also some people are allergic to those uh, Asian wasps that they're planning on bringing over, and some people will die from this. So our government is doing this under the table without telling anybody that they're doing this, okay? I object to it, and I'm trying to get people to join me and get off of that because you know I, I i think it should be something i mean you yourself cannot bring an insect from another country over here and let it go you would be put in jail for that okay but our government can do this without anybody even knowing about it the only reason i know about this what they're doing is because the scientists the ones that they told what they're planning on doing have gone on youtubes and done videos of this so 
uh, if, if you could know your congressman or whatever, tell them, to tell them they can't do this, to stop it. Because we need to stop it. So I'm trying to do a grassroots program here to get the government to stop this uh, bringing species over to take care of stuff. We don't need to do that. Uh, the stink bugs are, the only problem with the stink bugs, it's in two states, and it's not that big of a problem. They've got uh, special uh, treatments now where they can, you can, like cages, that you can, that you can uh, uh, put the ladybugs in, I mean, uh, uh, the stink bugs, and it'll capture them. So you don't need to, you don't need to uh, use parasitic wasps or any Asian wasps to take care of the stink bug. We can take care of it without that. And there's only two states out of all the United States that's, that has a problem. And so to me, it's not worth uh, the problem with people dying and uh, uh, killing all of our native species of ladybugs. Okay, next, next one. Okay, uh, ladybugs are lucky. They're considered the most uh, popular insect worldwide. Many cultures believe that they bring luck. In Australia, they're called uh, Guggenfeiser, lucky bug. And in some cultures, uh, they say that ladybug lands on you and you don't brush it off, you'll be lucky. Okay, next one. Now this particular one, a Powerball winner, she won $450 million. It, wasn't, it was about a year ago. She claimed she saw a yellow ladybug just before she won the giant jackpot. So now you guys have seen the yellow ladybug, so you can get your tickets. Okay, next one. Ladybugs are disappearing. So several, many of the species besides the C9 that I, I told you earlier are disappearing. The reason why uh, is because of the insect, the, the pesticides. Uh, the pesticides are getting into our water, is getting into everything. So these chemical companies are, um, are really uh, the reason why the overt use of pesticides. So uh, the reason why they want to study the ladybugs is because they're like the canary in the cave mine. Cave mine. So in the coal mine. So when you don't see a species or two, we should be, as a, as a, uh, a race, we should be concerned about that. Uh, Cornell University, uh, they got the $2 million thanks to Lini and Tara that wrote a song called Lost Ladybug. So if you go to my blog called The History of the Ladybug, I've got a free recording on it. You press that record link and you can listen to it. It's, they, got, they, they, they got many awards from that. Go ahead. That, that's them right there. That's the ones that wrote the song. They're the ones really responsible for getting the $2 million for the uh, college, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, next one. Okay, send your ladybugs photos to Cornell, Uni Cornell University. So on your cell phone, just take a picture of the ladybugs and then send it to them. Okay, next one. Native species migration. Okay, the ladybug species, they migrate. Uh, the ones here in California migrate to the Sierra Nevada mountains and the ones on the east coast uh, to the mountain ranges over there. But all the native species to the United States all use mountains where they migrate every winter. They migrate up to the high country and the snow country and they stay for the winter. And then uh, spring, March 1st, they come back down here. Okay, next one. So ladybugs, this is a ladybug. They took a picture of a ladybug at 3,500 feet flying. It turns out that they're masters of the jet springs. So what they do is they, uh, they know instinctively which jet stream to take to get them from point A to point B where they want to go. And so they instinctively know how to get exactly where they were, you know, the year before or whatever. So they, they did a study in, in, uh, in, in London, in the scientists, and they found out that ladybugs are not alone using these uh, jet springs. There's many other insects that are using these. Okay, next one. This is the migration. This is the, the date. So March 1st is the beginning of the season. That's where they come and lay their eggs. And then um, they stay until August 31st. And then they migrate up to the high country. And that's where they stay for the winter. 
and it starts all over again. So how long did ladybugs live? They lived for about nine months to a year, depending on species. Okay, next one. So founding students. So who were the very first students that used it was some years ago, and I happened to interview one of them um, doing my research on this uh, history of the ladybugs. I found them. These, uh, one of the students, they, he told me, they were hiking in the Sierra Nevada foothills in the snow-filled forest. He saw something red in the distance. A closer look, he found thousands and thousands of these red ladybugs all piled in the uh, size of a table. These are smart students. They knew that ladybugs ate other, other species, other insects. So they got baggies and they started bagging them and selling them to the local nursery. Hence the first sellers whispers. So that's what they call um, the people that find the ladybugs where they're hibernating, bag them up, and then sell them to the nurseries. They call them whispers. So they were the very first ones. Okay, next one. These are ladybugs in hibernation, what they look like. So these are some of the trees where they're at. This is in the high country. They're not around here. Okay, next one. Commercial versus uh, uh, certified breeders. Okay, as you know, they have ladybug whispers. They have commercial um, breeders now. And they have these big fish tanks. They're huge fish tanks. And they, they keep them in captivity and breed them in captivity. And they do a good job. They keep them at the right temperature. They feed them and make sure they got good food. And, but go ahead, next one. But there is a problem. The problem is, is with the, um, the way that they sell ladybugs in the retail stores. They want them hungry. So when you buy the ladybugs in the store, in the retail stores, um, they, they want to make sure that they're hungry. So they don't ship them with any food. If they ship them, they ship them with diet food. And the diet food the ladybugs hate. They, won't, they don't like it. Many of them don't eat. So what happens is they end up dying in the store, in the, in the containers. So um, everything you see here, I've incorporated into how you take care of the ladybugs. So all this behavior has all been thought of and taken care of. Go to the next one. So when they transport these ladybugs, I'm talking about the certified breeders now, when they transport them from down south over here, uh, what they do is they, uh, they don't send them in any food. They send them in a hot truck. And uh, as you know, ladybugs like the colder temperature. They're a cold-blooded insect. So what they do is they, um, uh, they don't handle the heat. So um, it's not good for them and not sending them with any food. They send them with diet food that they don't like. So many of them die by the time they get here. Okay, next one. So Corey's story. So before I started this, before I was doing anything, um, my sister Bella, uh, uh, she died of cancer. Now at the time when she died, I was working in civil engineering. And um, I, uh, we were working on a project that was uh, called Hidden Hopes. It was a 21 lot subdivision. Uh, $4 million per home. And we had to do a, 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 a wetland delineation. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's where it, you, you prove that it's not a wetland. Okay? So you have to do science, science research on it and prove that it's not a wetland and then you can develop it. So we did it. It wasn't a wetland. So um, my sister died of, of cancer. She, when she was in the hospital, I held her hand. She died of breast cancer. Now, my sister was, uh, um, she, didn't, she didn't eat meat. She didn't drink. She didn't smoke. She didn't do drugs. She didn't do anything. And she got cancer, breast cancer, and she died like that. I held her hand in the hospital when she died. It was quite a shock. So I, I was telling everybody after her death, just buy ladybugs and use ladybugs, okay? Uh, but what I found out, the reason why she died was because of what was in her well water. She had a toxic mess that was in her well water. It was a combination of pesticides 
and herbicides that mix together that forms a toxic stew and it's a catalyst for cancer. So um, when I was telling everybody to use ladybugs, it was because I was trying to encourage them uh, not to use pesticides because we've got to get people away from pesticides. It's an, it, when I did my testing for this project, the civil project, I had to test out the waters in nine barrier counties. Okay, all of the waters had it in it, not just ours. Okay, hers was the worst, my sister's. But the other ones all had it in it. So being a civil engineer with all this documentation, right? I felt obligated I was going to do something about it. So I went to the municipals, right? The big water municipals, right? I'm talking about these big, big companies. And I went in there and I had my documents. I walked in there. I said, yeah, I found some stuff in the water I think you should know about. And they looked at me and they laughed in my face. What are you going to tell us in the water? We know what's in our water. And I said, what? I said, well, I did this research and I, I found some toxic stuff that's in our water. Aren't you going to, aren't you, don't you even want to listen to it? They said, we know exactly what's in our water. Okay? So come over here and sit down. They had me sit down. They said, okay, now what are you trying to do here? Are you trying to create a panic? Are you trying to create a panic for people? And I said, no, I'm not trying to create a panic. I just, I found something and I wanted to share it with you. And they said, okay, how are you going to get that out of the water? And I said, oh, oh, I don't know. You guys are the guys that work in the water. You should know. And they said, well, you can't filter it out. The only way you're going to get that out of the water is if you distill the water. We're not going to distill all the well waters. We're not going to distill all the drinking water. Okay, so what we do is we add clean water to the mix. And then that's, what, that's all we're going to do. And I said, well, that's not, that's not good enough for me. So I said, I'm going to do something about it. So I found out that, there, that the, the chemical companies are always going to be selling chemicals, no matter what they're making. You might stop them from using one chemical, but they'll come up with another one. Okay, so the best thing to do is to go organic. Don't use chemicals. And tell everybody not to use chemicals. Okay, that, that'll take care of it. So how do you encourage people to do that? And that's my business. Go ahead, next one. So the lack of research. Okay, so when I first started with, the, with telling people to use ladybugs, my best friend Corey comes up to me and he says, John, I use ladybugs every year. I buy the ladybugs. At that time, it was like six or seven dollars for a herd. A herd is 1,500 ladybugs. Uh, so he bought the ladybugs. He says, I bring them home. I open up the container and I let them go. And they all fly away. It's like I paid $7 for their freedom. Okay? So there's something wrong with that picture. I said, well, did you ask the nursery uh, how you care for the ladybugs? Okay? Now, remind you, this is before I created the, the ladybug house, or I started the business, or I started the history of the ladybugs, any of this stuff, right? So. I said, okay, well, uh, uh, would you mind if I went and asked this nursery guy about the late, how you care for the ladybugs? He said, no, go ahead. So I went up and talked to the owner, and his name was John. And I said, John, okay, you sold Corey some ladybugs. Uh, how do you care for the ladybugs? He says, I don't know Corey from Adam. He says, I sell 300 containers a week. I don't ever tell him anything. It would be my buyer that tell him something. So who's your buyer? And he says, Josh over there. Turns out his, his son was his buyer. Okay, he could have just told me to talk to his son. So I, I go talk to his son, and I said, okay, uh, uh, Josh, what, what do you tell people when they buy ladybugs? I, I know you don't know Corey from Adam, and I know you sell 300 a week, but what do you tell people how to care for the ladybugs? And he said, everybody should know. Yeah, everybody should know. Well, I, I mean, let's say I don't know, I said. Tell me. Okay, so he says, okay, here's what you do. You go home, okay? You go in your backyard, okay? You get the biggest diameter garden hose you've got. Like if people got choices of different size garden hose, right? You, you get the biggest diameter garden hose you got, you turn on the spigot full of glass, and you take your hose, and you hose everything down with water, everything. 
And I, looked, I, I thought for a second, and I, I almost laughed in his face, but I didn't. That's the worst thing you could do. You know, you just hosed off all the ladybugs food that they're dying for food. You hosed it off the plants, out of your yard. So now you're forcing those ladybugs that are starving for food to go out of your yard in order to live. And if they don't get food right away, they're on their last legs, they're gonna die. Okay, so he, that's what he's telling people. So I said, well, okay, how many people buy repeat customers, buy ladybugs from you? He said, three. Everybody that buys ladybugs, they come back, the first one didn't work, the second one didn't work, and then the third one, they must give up. So that's why he's selling 300 a week, is because he's giving bad advice, right? So I said, okay, that's the low end. So now I'm gonna go to the high end. So I went to UC Davis, I talked to the, the, the instructors at the, at the Master Gardener program. I said, okay, I want to talk to your, your recent graduate student. Susie's over here. She just graduated. You could talk to her. So I go talk to Susie. Susie says, I said, okay, Susie, you know everything about the plants. You know everything about the animals. You know everything about the insects. Tell me, what do you tell people when they buy the ladybugs? How do you care for the ladybugs? You'd be surprised what she told me. Take a wild guess. She says, you go home. You go in your backyard. You get the biggest diameter. No, she didn't say that. But she said something almost as funny. She said, at, you look on your watch at 12 midnight, take your ladybugs, and you go to the, uh, your backyard, and at, you find at the base of the rose garden, you go and you let them go at the base of the rose garden at 12 midnight. And I thought to myself, you know, that's okay, because it's nighttime. Ladybugs are nocturnal, okay? But let's say I'm an 87-year-old woman. I'll break my hip out there at 12 midnight trying to put those ladybugs out there. So obviously nobody's ever done the research, right? So I did it. I got my English pith helmet on. I got my, my binoculars and my camera. And I brought them, I brought, bought some ladybugs, brought them home, opened up the container and let them go. And every place they went, I took a picture of them, documented them. They didn't go to my yard, they went to my neighbor's yard, they ate. The next place that they went was about a mile away from where I lived. They found a hollowed out, squirreled out tree and they made a nesting box and that's where they stayed. So now I know that they needed a nesting box. So I started with a big nesting box, got it down to size and now I perfected the size. So Joe, Joe, show them the ladybug house. So look at that. That's the size they are there. Two years of research went into that design right there. This is not just a house for ladybugs. This is the best ladybug house in the world. Nobody else has got this much research on ladybugs or the houses. Okay? Since 2007, I've been making and selling these houses. Not one. Not one person has ever come up and say these don't work. These are the best. There's nobody else has done this. They, uh, go ahead, go to the next slide. That's my sister Bella. Now, my sister Bella, let me tell you something. She's just one person. And the problem is with people with cancer is that you don't concern yourself until it's knocking on your door, until it's your brother or your sister or your mother that dies from breast cancer, right? Okay, why is all this breast cancer going on? Okay, I just had a friend of mine that I've known for years in, 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 over in Pleasant Hill. She's, she's had her second surgery now for breast cancer. She's only 40. She's got two kids. She doesn't think that she's gonna live long enough to, to uh, see her son graduate. Okay, now she, She's not a wild person doing drugs or something like that. So there's got to be something. It's this toxic mess that's in the water. And this is the whole thing. Now, what I did was I found out, I joined a, 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 an organization called Mothers Across America. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Have, are you guys familiar with it? You ever heard of it? It's a big organization. Okay, recently the chemical companies, uh, uh, Monsanto, they have a pesticide called um, uh, spray, spray and weed, or, or, or anyways, it's, yeah, Roundup, Roundup, okay? 
It's the glycosin that's in the weed killer that causes cancer. One of the, one of the workers, he got cancer and he's, he's dying now because he handled it. And he's dying now and he's got two kids. Okay, he sued him and he made millions of dollars, but now they're fighting him back. This chemical company is fighting him, trying to get his money back. Okay, so, but anyways, the, the Mutter's Association, what they did is they went to some of these big outfits like Home Depot and some of these other stores and said, please stop selling this. And they've been able to get some of them to pull it out of the stores now. So, but this is the problem is that even though if you pull it out of the store, even if they stop making it, they're just going to make another chemical. Do you see what the problem is? They're just going to make it, change the chemicals and they'll make something else. So we've got to stop it. We've got to stop using the chemicals. Even if it hurts us, we've got to stop it. So, I mean, I'll take a, a, a hoe or, or a shovel to, to kill a weed rather than use pesticides, or, or herbicides that mix with the, with the toxic stuff. So that's what we need to do is just stay away from it. And the best ladybug house is the only way that I see to encourage people to not use pesticides. So when you see somebody, go ahead, next slide, next slide. So when you see somebody, this is uh, another one, this is a pink ladybug project. They use it to um, uh, alert people about the breast cancer. Okay, next one. Ladybugs at trial, Eric. Okay, these are my websites, next one. Okay, ladybug versus chemicals, we've already went over that. Next one. This is the best ladybug house right there. This is it. So when you see one of these in somebody's yard or garden, it's not only that, that it's a, a, an image that's telling the world that they are organic, that they're, they're doing their part to save the big green, to save us. Okay, so everybody needs to think of that and do other things too. This is just ladybugs, but there's other things that you can do yourself to help this. Okay, and I, I'm working on another insect that we could use to take care of ants. And, and they eat ants 365 days a year. Okay, and if I'm successful with this insect, it's, it, there's only two species in the whole world that do this. And one of them is about 25 miles from here. And I think, I'm not positive, I have to have more documentation, but I think one is right up here on the preserve. Right here. But anyways, if we find this, you know, uh, uh, things to do instead of using pesticides, instead of using herbicides, it's, it's our survival as a human race. We've got to do this. Now, mothers uh, uh, across America now have found a company. Now, this is something all of you need to do. This is brand new. This just happened last week. They found a company that's making a, uh, a device that you plug in your sink. It does reverse osmosis, which means that it'll get rid of all those toxic mess in your water. Okay? So we need to encourage this. And I, I said, I, I can't believe that they can do this because the reverse osmosis, the ones that I've seen are big commercial ones. They take thousands of dollars to do. So I said, I want to see your documentation. And mothers across America have tested this thing out. They claim that it's, it's really worth the money to get. So we need to do this because the municipals that take care of our water is not going to do this. They're not gonna. They're not gonna. They're not gonna get it out of the water. So we have to do it ourselves. So, you know, uh, bo drinking bottled water is one thing. You know, it's out of that. But when you when you fix stew, when you fix uh, uh, soup at home, do you filter your water? No, nobody does it. So it's in your stew and in your in your water. So we've got to to use. A, a foresight and think of these things ahead to, to, to survive as a human race. We've got to start thinking about it and get used to this kind of behavior and do this because these chemical companies, they don't care about you. All they care about is making the money. 
It, the, the, the green buck is all they care about. Okay, so this is why I got started with this. Okay, that's it. This next one. The end. So don't forget to fill out your survey form. Joe's got it back there, and you get a free T-shirt. Thank you. We got. I got five hundred dollars worth of T-shirts here for you, and then I've got some hats. So just fill out the the paperwork there. Send it in. No name. Just just fill it out. Thank you very much. I appreciate that.